Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode here on European Confessions. The following message that you're going to be listening to, it was sent to me by one of our sisters and this is the narration of her story. The message reads like this, Hello brother Nashi, how are you? Can you please post my own story as hidden identity? My brother, I want to confess to you all the things that I did. And I know that there are people out there who are going to judge me, but I have come here on your platform trying to be very humble. Right now, I am trying to be humble because each and every person that becomes my best friend, when we break up our friendship, they will tell me that I am a toxic person. I am someone that is very ungrateful. So I don't know what is really wrong with me. That is why I have come here and I am looking for any kind of advice. When I came here in South Africa, this was in the year 2022, I started staying with one woman who became like my best best friend even though we come from the same village. When I came here, she was single but she had this other boyfriend of hers who is now my husband. So my friend is like way older than I am. At that time, the first time that I set my eyes on her so-called boyfriend, I immediately fell in love with this man because this man he has a lot of benefits since he is like a South African. So I saw an opportunity that if I date this guy, there are a lot of benefits that I am going to be getting. So I then said, this man is supposed to be mine. I thought that this was like true love because whenever we would look at each other, I would see him like looking away, sometimes avoiding eye contact with me. And I knew that this was like love at first sight. So I wanted him to myself. But what I didn't realize was that this was just an obsession. And me being a toxic person, when I was staying with my friend, there were some things that she would do, some things that made me to think that she hated me. And I blame myself and I blame my grandmother because this was the way that I was raised by my grandmother. My grandmother would blame the whole village even if she was the one who was wrong. And everyone in our village suspected that my grandmother was a witch. And let me tell you a story about my grandmother. The way that both of my parents passed away, they died under very mysterious circumstances. My mother, I was told that she was a very beautiful woman. So my mother, when she was staying with my father in the city, then it was said that my grandmother was then approached by this other man who had a gold mine. You know, those people that go to the white government church who are allowed to have as many wives as they can afford. This man, it was said that he approached my grandmother and my grandmother married off my mother to that man alone. Where have you ever had a mother marrying off her own daughter who is already married to another man without telling her relatives and without even informing my mother's relatives as well. She did this in the dark and by the time when this man sent his relatives so as to come and collect my mother, my mother was shocked and then she refused. And when she refused, when she tried to return back to the city, that was when my grandmother was said to have cursed my mother. And after that, my mother's legs, they started to get so swollen until she passed away. When she passed away, just like my grandmother had told her that she would never leave the village, my father came to attend the funeral of my mom. But when my father came to attend this funeral, he, it was said that he had gone to fetch some water with his other brother-in-laws. And whilst they were there, my father was said to have fallen into a well and he then died because when they pulled him out of that well, they saw that his skull was cracked. So everyone just blames my grandmother. From there on, everyone said that my grandmother was a witch. She was a witch because she had tried to marry off my mother to another man. So I grew up in that environment and I just took my grandmother's character. She is such a toxic woman, even up until this day. Whenever I try to do something good to 
with her, but she will always complain. She will always find a reason to blame you. My brother, when I came here to South Africa, I stayed with this woman since she was the one who had invited me. But with time, she then introduced me to her boyfriend, the South African guy, and then I fell in love with that guy. But I want to confess that for the first time in my life, I then went back home and I spoke with my grandmother and I asked her for the first time in my life if indeed she was a witch. She laughed at me and she said, oh, now you believe this nonsense that everyone in the village always uh, speaks about. And I said, no, I do not believe that you are a witch because if you were a witch, you could have eaten me when I was still alive because when my mom passed away, I was still breastfeeding so what she will do is that she she will go and collect the milk from the gods and that was the milk that she would give to me and she said i am proud of you if you believe that i am not a witch my brother i then told my grandmother that there was this man who was in south africa he was not rich but at least he has he had a lot of things that he could do for me so i wanted the benefits that came from dating a local man my grandmother then made me to perform this ritual she said that these rituals that she wanted me to perform they were going to make any man that was going to sleep with me to really go crazy about me but she said that it was going to be a very painful one and i had i didn't know that this was the way that these rituals were going to be performed on my body late at night it was me and my grandmother she told me that i had to accompany her but just when we were about to leave the compound my grandmother did something that was really suspicious to me because she went out of the compound but let me say that she jumped out of our compound then she jumped in back and she instructed me to do the same and after that she said strip yourself naked down to the underwear and when i was naked and as he was naked we then walked out of our compound and we were headed for the forest we were looking for this other plant in shona it is called dorophia in english prickly pear so when we found the place where a lot of these plants were growing the prickly pears and then she told me that i had to grab one with my hand and i said you know that I cannot do this because that plant, it has a lot of thorns. And once you just get hold of one of those plants, not using a plastic or anything, you are going to suffer. So I refused. But my grandmother said, if you want that man, then you are going to do this. My brother, I then got the courage. I then just took one and she said, one is not going to be okay. I asked her as if I wanted to cry. I said, how many grandma am I supposed to grab not using a plastic or anything? She said, seven. How many days are they in a week? I said, seven. So she said, seven for each and every day until the week has passed. My brother, instead of returning back to South Africa that, that following day, she told me that I was going to stay for nine more extra days in Zim. And after I had gathered those prickly peas, she made me to hold them in my own hands as I was holding these seven prickly peas, they made me to be very itchy. We then returned back to the compound and we sat outside. My grandmother then told me that I was not supposed to take out the thorns like we usually do when you want to eat this prickly pear. But she said I had to leave them like this and she directed me on how I was supposed to store them. So we went to that house where she kept her grains and then I left them in there and I went to bed but she said that I was supposed to keep one so six of them I went and I stored them in that room where she keeps her grains and I went into my bedroom and I fell fast asleep early in the morning she woke me up and she said it is time for us to start this ceremony so that whoever you place between your legs that man will go crazy about you i said it is fine i am ready i didn't know what she was about to what she was about to do to me she said take that uh, fruit that you kept underneath your bed i was afraid now to touch it because my hands were sore my skin was itchy because of handling this prickly peas 
so she said come come get out of bed and come and take it so i then took it my brother and she made me to lie on top of this other red mat and i was naked and she was also naked when she made me to do this ritual she then told me that what i was supposed to do is that i had to rub my private parts with that prickly pee and as i was rubbing my private parts i started to cry my brother because the itchiness was just unimaginable the pain i felt the poison that was entering into my skin i felt that my private parts the skin on my private parts it was getting swollen but she told me that i had to keep on doing it and when i felt that i could not take it anymore she would tell me to rest and after resting i had to continue for before sunset this prickly pea it was supposed to be clean then just before sunset i had to open that prickly pea and eat it for seven days i did this each and every day my brother i would rub this prickly pea on my private parts until it was like swollen my brother and even right now the way that my private part is when a man just looks at my private parts that man will start to go crazy about me because what my private part looks like it is like there is someone who pumped a in the skin that surrounds my private parts so my grandmother said that i should not worry because this makes a man to feel really wonderful when he is making love to me even if i meet a man that has erectile dysfunction the moment that he inserts his manhood into my private parts the way that this ceremony was done on me it is such that my private part it traps heat and when a man is making love to me because of that heat that is trapped by my private parts it won't even last for more than two minutes even right now i avoid to wear your trousers even the bum shorts because when i wear a trousers or anything that is tight so my private part it will actually be shaped by that bum shot or the trousers so when i came back when my friend one day went to work and the boyfriend was in the neighborhood we came and we were just relaxing my brother i said this is now my time i then went and i changed my clothes i wear this very tight shorts and the moment that i just got out of the house as we were sitting I started noticing him his eyes they were at the correct position where i wanted them to be he kept on looking at me my brother and i said can you come and help me to change the tv station if he, he followed me indoors my brother then i made him to touch me and i just wanted to check his reaction that man he cried when he was on top of me he cried he actually cried and i saw tears that was that were flowing out of his eyes i asked him why he was crying like that he said that i was just too wonderful and he was really feeling good so you could not control his tears and i knew that my grandmother had done it for me and that is how i ended up keeping this man this man he has done a lot of wonderful things for me that i do not even want to mention because he does things that he is not even allowed to do just for the sake of love just for the sake of pleasing me your dear listeners right there was a message that was sent to me a very difficult translation but i'm hoping that you were able to understand so in your own language please can you write in the comment section what do you call this fruit that is called the picky pea uh, in shona it's called dorothea and so you can write in your own language what is the name of this fruit that is called the picky pea fruit i'll try to put a picture so that everyone can understand.